Hi YouTubers, catching up on some very small jobs on the motorhome and uh, it's silly things and um, you know small jobs. The forecast for the next few days is horrendous, the wind's picking up now and uh, I don't think I could be down the van very long. And But one of the jobs I'm going to start with is the aerial amplifier. Well. It's nothing wrong with it, and there's an aerial on the roof. The only thing is, we don't have a TV, we don't watch TV, and we don't listen to radio in the motorhome. But this is causing a problem. And the problem is a simple one. In this cupboard is the cable, all right? And what can happen is, you see this, this catch here? When this goes back, sometimes it catches on the cable and you either can't open this this cupboard or you can't shut it because of this bloody cable here and as we don't use the telly i'm going to get rid of this cable and take the amplifier out and i'm going to start by just cutting that cable i think or pulling the uh, cable clips out got the i've got the cable clips out now let's get, cut this off. Oh, here we go. Up here. Cut it off. Right. I can pull this. Disconnect this. Pull that out. And then got a hole there now. And this. Amplifier, I should pull the connection, it should just come off. He says, I don't want to break it because somebody might want it. Yeah, no, it does come off. Anyway, let's get some brute force on it. Okay, so the amplifier's out now, and um, I'll put a Extend the lead for anybody that wants it. It's a bit mucky. There's nothing really wrong with it. And uh, all I've got to do is test the light, which, yeah, the light's fine. Let's go back. Got to put some caps on here, they just cover the screws, which is a bit of a pain. Just finger tight, like that. One, there's another cap on there. Okay, there we go. It's all back, and I've got a little hole there, which is not too bad. There's some screw holes, which they're not too bad either. So if anybody wants this amplifier, it's 12, 24 volt. It's got um, 12, 24 volt operation, antenna in, TV, FM out for radio. And it's got low or normal amplification and an on off switch with a light. And I say I'll extend this lead and put some new cable on it so it can run a bit further distance. You know, probably put about a foot on that cable on it or even more. Just wants cleaning up and I'll do that. So just drop me an email if you want it and I'll post it out to you. I don't want anything for it. This is another small issue with a van. It's these taps loose like that. I can see it. And the problem is to get this out to tighten the nut. I have to take the sink out, the cupboard doors, then unscrew this piece of wood and lift it upwards. So I have to dismantle the whole unit to get this tab. Now one of the tricks I've been told by a plumber is use piece of string and 
wrap it round and round and round and round and then put a sealant on it and the string will um, absorb the sealant and it will make a seal to stop water going down so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to wrap some string around it I've started you can see that and it acts like a seal Perhaps need another wrap around. Okay, that's it. Look, solid. So that trick seems to do the job. I'll put the uh, bowl back in the sink. Yeah, simple trick. One of the jobs I've got to sort out, and I don't know how I'm going to do it is to do with this and this is where the air intake comes through the bonnet and I've had water go in there when it's really really bad weather now whether it's because the water can get down the back of here and get in there I'm not sure but I'm gonna to have to look at that it's just another little niggly problem and the other thing is these water rails here can get water coming down there and you see it goes inside the bonnet rather than, if this was taken out here it would run out on the outside can you see it it finishes down there it would come this way it would go on that way so it runs all down there and on this side and you get water build up down in that corner which is a really really bad design I've got to do something with that and it's raining again and the, uh, the wind's picking up down the storage, so I'm going to be packing in now. Now on the motorhome, we're trying to make it more insulated for the winter. And uh, these are double glazed, the plastic side ones. We've put extra insulation in the roof and where we can. But this is single glazed on the front. We've got a cover that can go around the front windscreen, but on these. So I've made this wood see it it's raining it's wood that side and it's this sound deadening thermal insulation stuff and I wanted a way to attach it to that god the wind's coming up onto this door and it's very simple you just wind the door down a little bit then we can see on this top edge there's some ties and you tuck it through the window like that The window up. Okay. Up. See these ties, and you just pull them through and wind the window up, and that holds it in place. No magnets, no hooks, nothing, and you can't pull it down to pull the wind at glass down, and it holds it in place. Simple. lifts out and I just put the window back up and that holds it well I'll get back in the van because it's draining now oh bloody weather oh Jesus ah, right now back in the van oh, I can lock this door bad enough They're going to say, well, where am I going to store them? Well, there's several ways we can store them. One is we can lay them flat under the bedding up here. Secondly, they will fit behind the seats there if we need to. Um, thirdly, they will go up here on bungee cords. On here, I'm going to get a cargo net to go up there. So these can go like that and they'll store out the way quite nicely up there with a cargo net. In fact I'm going to tuck one of these up there. That's 
that's just put up there roughly. You can see I can storm up there and it don't take any space up in the ground. That's it for the day. Um, just got to put this in the rear window. If I can remember which way this goes. This is another one I made for the rear windows to keep it warmer in the winter. And I just slot in the back like that. There's a little bit of a light gap, but it's not too much of a problem. Okay, I'm back home now. This is the aerial amplifier. I put some longer cables on, soldered it, and put some heat shrink. I didn't have red wire, so I've used orange and black. And uh, it runs from 12 or 24 volt DC. So if anybody wants this aerial amplifier, drop me an email. Uh, my email's on the end of the um, video. And uh, with your name and address, and I'll get it posted to you. And uh, hopefully it'll come in handy for someone. Not this. This 